Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Spectra, here in another video in Wayward Return Frontier. We're going to bring a tutorial for you today, and it's kind of a what to do at the beginning slash what to do after you're done with, you know, just getting into the game kind of a, a video. It's kind of there to help the beginners possibly figure out which direction to kind of go, because this game doesn't really hold your hand all that much, and at the same time does. It's kind of weird, but for the most part, doesn't really hold your hand. So, the first thing I want to talk about is... You got to you got to pay attention to the tutorials. Um, the tutorials help a lot, and the thing about the tutorials is once the tutorial is up, game refuses to hold your hand about that subject ever again in the game. So if it talks about docking, it'll never hold your hand again for how to dock. It's it's very the tutorials are helpful, but as soon as the tutorials are over, you are getting no more help. So if you're at the beginning of the game and you skipped over a bunch of dialogue because you're just like, I don't really care about what he's talking about. I gotta suggest you start another save just to go through the tutorials because you will be extra, extra lost. Um, over the years, and not just recently, I'm talking about all the time, most of the questions I get asked could easily be answered by the tutorials that the game has in game if you just paid attention to the tutorials. Um, sometimes, you know, the tutorials doesn't make sense and you still need extra help and that's fine. I'm, I'm here to help as much as I can, but help yourself as much as you can and pay attention to the, to the tutorials. If you've played for a long time, you know, you have the habit of skipping through them because you've listened to it a thousand times like I have. So, you know, I understand that. I do the same thing. But if you're new, please listen to them. Next, I want to talk about, uh, trading. So if we come into the map, actually, before I come into the map, when it comes to trading and getting uh, getting money, uh, trading is the best way to get more and more money. Uh, as you can see, I have 3.7 million credits. And the way I got that is just by trading like crazy for like two sessions. That's really all it took for me to get all that money. And when you go to start trading, I highly suggest finding this ship right here, the EF-4. It's a civilian grayish brown version, not the military red one. This one has a ton of storage. And you can maybe find this in a blueprint somewhere in one of the stations, but you can honestly, the easiest way to find it is to go out and find it out there trading near a station and just either dock to it and kill everybody inside or destroy the cockpit, which is in the top left corner, um, and dock with it then and, and you know claim it and repair it and take it back. But I highly suggest you get this ship as soon as you can for trading because it's got a large cargo bay, and it's got a single gun so you can kind of defend yourself if you get in trouble. Um, it. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, I totally forgot what I was going to say for a second. It's Its storage is so good that even though I have these ships, I still use this as my trade ship. I still haven't gotten off of it. That's how much I love it. Now, when you go into the map, you'll notice mine possibly looks a little bit different from yours because I've got all these dots everywhere. You'll most likely have a more blank version of this. Now, the way I discovered these is by basically just traveling through the zones. As you travel through these different grids, when I say zones, I mean these little grid squares. So I'll either call them zones or grids or whatever. F simply flying through them, and you see I haven't discovered all the ones down here yet, and possibly some of these ones in these little corners, um, if there's even any there. But you basically fly through, and that's how you discover them. Now, you can... Trading is basically buying resources from one station and taking it to another and selling it. So you can hover over and kind of see what they have. But where trading really comes in is like, let's click on this independent trade hub. If I left click on it, suddenly you see all this information about that specific trade hub. Now, if I hover over, let's say um, this right here, this gold mine, you'll notice that suddenly some new information changes. On the selling, you see a 60, uh, on the assorted parts, you get a 641 per slot. And then another one is like a minus 223. Now, th that independent st trade station that I left clicked on is selling assorted parts. Um, so the really more important side is the buying. So let's actually find a better example that has more stuff to sell. Is this the one I clicked on? Let's click on this one and come over to this one 
So I left clicked it, left clicked on this one and hovered over this one. Now I could still use the selling, but I'm gonna use buying for the first explanation of it. So you see there's a an 80 or is that a six? 66 per slot for iron ore. Now if I go to this iron mine and buy iron ore, that means that trade station will buy it for 66 uh more dollars per slot. Or we'll sell, we'll buy it for sixty-six dollars per slot. Sorry. So I can come over here and buy it. Now, if I click on this iron mine, you see the information changes, and I hover over this. You can now see the reverse. So you can see uh, that buying it's it'll buy assorted parts that you buy from the independent trade for seven hundred and ninety-four. So that might be a decent route is coming from this trade station to this trade to this trade station and going back and forth. And so really the goal is to find go out and find one that is really good so sometimes you can get them in the thousands like this right here so i noticed that it's a uh, selling so if i click on this materials lab and come back over and hover over this one so i've clicked on the materials lab and I'm hovering over this independent trade that means that material lab is buying graphite for 1193 per slot so what i would do that's a great deal and worth well worth its well it's time same with the assorted parts at 898 i would go to that materials lab or i'd go to the independent trade buy up the graphite and assorted parts and come over here and sell it now sometimes you can find yourself a route where you're traveling amongst like three different stations and creating like a loop but i often find myself going back and forth between two maybe three stations at a time and just kind of working my way throughout the system oops um and so that's the basics of trading um, if you want a more in-depth tutorial, please let me know and I'll do runs with you and do a much more in-depth tutorial of how I go through the entire process and showing me doing it. But that's the basics and that's a great way to make money so that way you can buy blueprints whenever you want, buy, buy armor and weapons and not have to worry about money for doing research and all that stuff because it can be a pain when you have to worry about that kind of thing. Uh, while we're on this station, warp stations are very useful. So you see here when I slept on this on the legend over here i've got three warp stations in this area it allows you you fly up to them and you can press m once they're activated come to the map and click on another one and you instantly warp there it saves you a lot of travel time when going to different uh far sections in this beginner zone and uh you'll even be able to use them out in the uh outer zones too now when you don't have them active like i don't well that one's not a really good example It'll be grayed out when it's deactivated, the symbol down here in the top bottom left. Now what you do to go activate it is you dock with it. Usually there's like a single ship, maybe two defending it. You kill them, dock with it. There'll be a bunch of dead of those little robot bug things. Kill them in their nests. Then there'll be like a server room. You go in, you just walk into the room and you activate the gate. First time you do this and early on, in, there's a tutorial about this. But again, you may have skipped it or missed some of the information or whatever. But you simply walk in the room and activate and then leave and then suddenly the warp gate's active. It's super useful. I highly suggest taking advantage of those if you're not already. Next, in these trade hubs, these ones right here, oftentimes they're a large station. Not all of them are a super large station. It'll be a large station that has like a ring, two lines going through. Um, and those have both blueprint and like weapon shops in them. Every time you're in them, I highly suggest always checking the blueprint room and getting any blueprints you possibly can. So you're constantly getting up to building up your store and resources of uh, research. So that way, when you go to want to remove a module from a ship later on, you can, or you're getting all the ships that are possibly at your disposal, um, weapons at your disposal, things like that. And with armor, getting the, getting better armor gradually. Um, next is raiding stations see on the map and not all of them some of them are not on the map i've noticed but you have all these abandoned stations it's these symbols right here i'll even zoom in for you this these ones right here now there was a tutorial at the beginning of this as well about going and finding raid station it's how you find the extra tube for marv so you can be a part of your crew um you can often find good loot in these stations as well as a bunch of other things you'll need things for crystal farming um just all sorts of gear like the different uh here like i'll show you some examples of stuff you can find like the auras that's the word i was looking for different armors different weapons um 
Most of my beginning good weapons and armor all come from uh, raided abandoned stations as well as auras. That and also taking down ships is also a good idea. If you can if you can find a ship that's bigger than you and take it down, you'll often find good loot as well. But I highly suggest while you don't have a great ship to go raid those stations. And even now, after I have good ships, I still need to go raid some stations because I want to get more stuff for crystal farming. Um, so I highly suggest taking advantage of that resource that's all over the map. Next, uh, I want to talk about how I go looking for bigger ships. Now, when you're traveling through the center of this beginner zone, there's asteroids everywhere. And as you slowly get towards the edge, right before you hit black space, um, you'll find that there are some sections that don't have asteroids. Now, I got to stress that this is really RNG, um, finding a large ship, like a three star. And when I say when I'm saying large ship, I'm meaning like if I get out of this menu and come in here and look at my ships, I'm talking like these tier ships, the ones with starting with the bars. Like at the beginning, you'll probably start finding some like boulders, possibly a rapier or a spear. Um, so if you go out to those sections that have uh, less asteroids, I find more commonly I find them there. And I don't know if that's just my luck or if that's really a thing. But I like right now in my world, I come up here and I often find those kind of ships or right along here, I find those kind of ships. So going along the edges, but honestly, just flying around anywhere, even through the asteroids. I see them in the middle of asteroids too. It's not like I don't see them there. It really comes down to just flying around a lot throughout your entire orange zone, which is the starting zone. And then as you get bigger and better, you can even start flying out into open space and I will sometimes find big ships out there. It seems a little less frequent, but you can find them out in the middle of the just deep space. That's what I'll call it. And then as you come into the more pirate zone, which is this red zone, you'll also find big ships just flying around. It really is just you know, take an hour, put on put on something either on your phone or if you're lucky enough to have a second monitor, put it on something on your second monitor or listen to something on your earbuds while you're playing the game. Just fly around until you find a better ship. It really can be just, it's really just as simple as that. Um, the next suggestion I have is follow the story. If you're feeling stuck with gear, like you can't progress, do the next couple of story missions. Even if you don't feel ready for them geared wise, sometimes the story robot guy, one, I think is his name, will try to scare you and say, be sure to be prepared. And you're like, well, I don't feel prepared. I feel like I'm in this cruddy ship. Just go try to do it anyways. Oftentimes you'll find it's a little bit easier than you think it is. Um, because as you progress in the story, things in the shops become better. I notice more spawns of bigger ships become more frequent. That may not be a thing. That's just what I've noticed over playing it for how long I've played it. It always feels like as soon as I'm progressing, I see bigger ships more often. And suddenly, and I know this for a fact, the stores suddenly start having way better items. And I can start buying from them. Come to the Pirate Cove and all of a sudden you'll be able to buy stuff at the Pirate Cove stores. They're way better. Progress in the story. Even if you don't feel quite ready, what's the harm in trying it? If you completely fail, well then maybe you got to spend a couple sessions of playing know building up your resources a little bit and um things like that um but that's really the basics of kind of getting started if there's something you want a tutorial in that dives a little bit deeper into one of these subjects uh please let me know and i'll do my best to try to get to that as soon as i can um but just to kind of do a review it basically comes down to follow all the tutorials if you're new do trade if you're hard, if you're hard on money that are attacking trade ships um, take advantage of abandoned stations for good loot. Um, and if you're good enough, attack other ships to get good loot. Take advantage of warps to save time. Um, and then just always be on the lookout for ships because they could be anywhere and follow the story. Progress in the story as often as you can because things will just naturally get better for finding loot and ships. And as you progress in the story, the story actually gives you better ships. They just hand it to you. So if you can get by with the ship you can, you'll just be given a better ship. It it, it really does happen. So I, I can't stress it more. Um, I hope this is helpful. I wanted this to be more of an explaining, res less be going through the effort of trying to show you all in, in detail and possibly making this ridiculously long. Um, but if you have a subject you want more detail, please let me know and I'll again try to do it. Uh, anyways, I'll see you in the next video. See ya!